Okay, we're back. We're back. Joel and Sal with details. What's up? Today, man. Top five. Got, another one. Another one. We got one for you guys. Top five. Today, we're going to talk about industry phrases and buzzwords. Oh, there's a lot of them. What you got coming off? So first off, I think we should define buzzword, what a buzzword is. Uh, generally, a buzzword is used in an industry to spark interest. It's the cool current slang. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Basically, a buzzword is there to generate attention and to get your money. So that's how they're traditionally used. But... Words, we all know words can transform into other things, so... Uh, hey, you know a word or slang term right now that I don't like that's annoying? What's that? Low-key. Oh, man, I get that, man. That one right there, that's a buzzword. That's a buzzword that's in the... Yeah, and, and, and now low they're key. using low-key when something is obvious. Yeah, low-key. It's like, uh, low oh, key that's like low, a, that's low-key... That's low key cool. There's like, gonna be a podcast pretty soon. Low-key podcast yeah. somewhere. And it won't be low-key. <laughs> <laughs> so, so buzzwords, uh, let me give you a couple examples in the, um, in the fitness world, one that I cannot stand a huge, huge buzzword that they've, it's a word that's always been, you know, in nutrition, but they're putting it now as a buzzword and they're, you're noticing it on pretty much every, every, you know, item that's consumable and that's eaten in the industry of of uh you know of fitness and can you guess what that is protein yeah protein they say protein everything all oh, protein bars protein, protein cookies this, protein everything they protein all taste everything. like shit yeah it's like <laughs> okay the, yeah it's protein i get it it's like glue glue free uh, you know what's making a comeback what? creatine Oh, it is. The like, it's, yeah, I know, it's making a big comeback. But uh, that's for another one. But gluten free for a long time was uh, was was a buzzword. So you got these buzzwords always going around, and there you'll notice them in every industry. Um, start paying attention as a consumer, and you'll you know. Uh, uh, so uh, go ahead. What you uh, no, I was gonna say like you got that old school tia or something like. Hey, mijo, it's a gluten free. They're like. <laughs> <You're> like <laughs> We should start talking about gluten. What's what, what you know about gluten? Uh, Man. Yeah. Like, what, what, I ate those fresh stuff? tortillas yeah. for 30 years. You can talk about gluten free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so buzzwords, guys. So buzzwords, yeah. So they're in every industry. And uh, we got a few in our industry that are a little bit, uh, they're a little bit annoying to say the least. But they're working because these guys uh -huh. are making money off you guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and a lot of these, well, not not so much off of the pro detailer, but a lot of you DIYers, they're making a killing off of you guys. So let's get into these buzzwords. Mm. Right, no, it's got to be ceramic. Oh, okay. ceramic, everything. Ceramic protection, like they put. You guys already know ceramic, 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 and the consumer usually doesn't know the difference. But there's so many different types of ceramics. And ceramic is one of those words that that's technically overused because it only has to be. Yeah, it's the, it's the, I lose I use that term loosely. Yes. When, they do that when you say ceramic. Yes. So ceramic is for something to be, you know, <laughs> qualified as ceramic, it only has to have a small percentage of the active ingredient in it. So, and this this is true along. All types of industries, uh, the food industry, like to be able to be call it, you call it, you're able to call it reduced fat if it's a percentage yeah. off. You could call it fat free if it's a percentage off of the original calorie. So with ceramic, you could say ceramic if it's 5%, 10%, 50%, 80%. Ooh. So to a consumer, yeah, it gets very, very confusing. Um, but that is one of the buzzwords that. That's just crazy. It's just buzzwords for buying, buzzwords for 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 actual business, saying that you uh, 
that you offer ceramic services is at this point it is so normal ceramic ceramic it's jobs just, now are are i don't know I hate to tell you guys are not that high of a price point anymore so because so many people are doing them yes if they're doing it right you know yes what I mean? yeah if you're doing it right yes and you can offer them as and this is a good and a bad thing you can offer them as so many different you know there's more options out there for for the customer which is great because as you know, from from a consumer perspective, it's like, okay, I don't gotta spend the two grand to get to right. my car coat or a thousand dollars or even five hundred, whatever. I can get ceramic protection for X amount of dollars. But unfortunately, that's not the way that these things are pitched. You're they're pitched like, oh, this is gonna this is gonna give you eight months of ceramic protection. And this is one of the reasons why we love certain products that we love, like for instance, Jimbo's. He's given us a ceramic protection. This stuff is actually working. It's working better than some of these hey. one-year ceramic, you know, true ceramic coatings. You know who's killing, you know who touches on the buzzwords? Who's that? And and uh, not, not shits on them, but like really like holds it down and says like on their instructions, oh. Bill Hammer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the way they talk about their product. Oh, they they hit on all these things like saying like yo, air, surround like. They, oh, they, it breaks it down. Yeah, like, like it, it, was just, it, it was just like just like, like this other stuff people claim like this stuff does this. Yeah, and it, it's, it's it's interesting like yeah, yeah that, that, that's their way of education. Yeah, is yeah. through kind of like yeah, yeah myth yeah. busting in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's I like that because that's to me that's refreshing. That's. That's honesty. And as a professional, when I'm buying something, I just want it to work. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not asking for amazing results. Like, just do what you say you're going to do. Like, there's nothing more frustrating than, than a service, product, or an individual not doing what they say they're going to do. It's like how we really talk about the importance of um, setting those expectations. When something is sold to us, that's the expectation being sold. You know, make sense? Right, right. So when you're selling me an expectation and it's not delivering, like why are we still having, why, why are you still in business? That's just telling me there's enough people out there that don't care about that enough. But when it comes down to you as an individual, we get drilled. And that's why I always say, and we've said this in past videos, where we're always held accountable to certain things as a business. We're held accountable to certain things as a technician, as a influencer. They try to say, oh, you got to whatever. You know, there's some accountability there that some people believe, you know, just because you're on social media, you should have, um, you know, some truth or whatever. Um, but what about these companies that are, that are selling you the lies that are, that are, that are hustling you using these buzzwords saying, oh, the best drying towel, this and that, and it's not delivering, but we're still supporting that. That's where it's kind of like, yo, maybe you need to be called out. Maybe you, and that, that was one of the, the like in the, uh, the overrated video, we, 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 we put it down like, yo, these are overrated. I don't know why you guys are still messing with this. You know what I mean? You want the industry to get better. You want to have better results. You want, you want things to progress, then we need that. We need that that honesty. That's the only thing that's gonna, you know, really create change. If you, you it's like telling telling your little brother, oh man, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job when you know that man is failing, when you know he's not doing well. Like you, it's it's not doing anybody any good. Yeah, unfortunately. Shout out to the guys that understand that, but everybody else is all going to re revert back to feelings, the way you said it now. And it's just yeah. like, nah, I'm just, yeah. 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 Business don't have emotions. From, from, my, from my experience, business does not have emotions. Like if you start operating off of emotions, you're going to put yourself in a lot of trouble. But emotions sell, so whatever. Yeah. You capitalize on it. Yeah. So right. ceramic, overused, overhyped, buzzword. All right, next one. <laughs> this is your favorite right here. Protect your investment. Oh, okay. Protect. This is a phrase. So this is a buzz phrase. Protect your investment. And I always hear detailers use this for trying to sell the ceramic coating. <laughs> so, and, and I'm not saying, and when we talk about these being buzzwords, we're not saying that these things are not real. 
these are real things, but these are just words that that you're trying to attract or people in the industry are trying to attract to usually get money, right? Like you hear ceramic coating so much, even guys that don't know how to detail that want to get into detailing, what do they what do they all want to do? Ceramic coating. Ceramic coating. Why? Because they've heard the buzzword around it so much or clients when they want it, I want that ceramic coating. They don't even know what it is. You know, you when you break it down to them they're like Oh, well, I don't know if I need that, but I'll, you know, mm. I want it because I want it because it's hot. You know, that's the way people are followers. If if a buzzword is proven to show results, guess what? The companies are going to use them. So we're not saying that these are not words. These are these are highly effective words. Let's put it that way. Highly effective words and phrases that have proven results. And that's why people continue to use them. So the protector investment. The reason I don't like, this is always overused and I feel like people try to do it to, to hit a, a soft point in a client primarily because the vehicle is your, you know, in, in most cases, the vehicle is your second most expensive uh, thing that you buy in your lifetime. So they're uh, behind a house. They're, they're associating high money things with and bad decisions as an investment. They're, yeah, well, they're <laughs> they're. It's kind of like when you buy a car and someone says congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations! You now have a seven hundred dollar car payment for the next thirty six months or six. Like say it like that. It don't sound like a congratulations. Man. Say congratulations when it's paid off. And, 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 and we're not getting into anybody's financial like situation. We're just talking in general. Somebody buys a car. The average price of a car is not cheap. Let's just say somebody spends $60,000. We'll, we'll say it's a little bit more. Let's say it's a, you know, whatever. It's a nicer car. Let's say $60,000, $65,000 in there. Somebody pays $60,000, $65,000 for a car. Nice car. Say Audi or Mercedes SUV or whatever. Uh, they get one of those, the little one, the little one, it's a little SUVs. They buy that. In their mind, they got to do everything they can. If it's an average person, they're going to want to do everything they can to preserve that because they just spent a lot of money on that, right? So what is what what is the going to be the second step? Okay, I got I got to take this to get protected. It's not an investment though. If you're buying a car as an investment, you're a terrible investor because there's a very small percentage of vehicles that actually appreciate in value over time. Trailers, boats, uh, cars, we see it every day. What do they do? They just decrease in value, decrease in value. Like literally, as soon as they're purchased, the value just drops. Unless it's a classic vehicle, has historical value, or there's some kind of, you know, anomaly that happens in the world and society like COVID, where there's a there's a dramatic shortage. That's the only time you'll see appreciation in vehicles. It's not an investment. So, well, I, well, just like the, the just the term investment is just overused. That's a buzzword too. You know what I mean? Just invest in your could, business. That, that, yeah, that should be yeah, on here too. Yeah. Let's throw it on here. Invest in your business. Yeah. But yeah, basically, we'll get back to protect your investments. So, it's almost like they're they're playing on like, oh, you made a great choice. You did make an investment in this. So let's protect that. You know, almost like a. And to me, it sounds like bad, bad financial coaching. Mm -hmm. That to me, that's what it sounds like when when I hear people trying to use that to sell things. The the terminology just doesn't sit well with me. Um, uh, it's it's also too like you hear those words. That's what a word that we everyone should be doing. Not everyone does though, but I I'm sure that word makes people feel a little smarter. Oh, that that's you definitely what, I mean? what it is. Because oh, I know what I know what I'm talking about. Yes, say, yes. I say words like investment. And as <laughs> and as a consumer, if I don't know those words, you're like, yeah, you are right. I am I am gonna protect my investment. <laughs> you know what I mean? That that ego comes into that pride. I am gonna protect this investment. You're right. You're right, you can. Oh, you know, you, you smart guy, yeah, I'm gonna protect this investment. <laughs> 
fuck out of here. All, All right. right, so. <laughs> Got to protect their investment. Yeah. All right. Um, certification. That's a word. And are you certified? <laughs> So or yeah, certified. Cert certified what? Certified. Like, it's just certified like from, from who? Yeah, for who? From what? Yeah. Like like, what does this do? What yeah. is it proving? Like it's why are you certified? Yeah. <laughs> is it is it is it necessary for this certification? And I feel like the industry definitely abuses this one. Um, there's. There's a I, lot of things that just, require certification for that's the, access. And that's the problem. People feel they need a certification to be certified. To feel legit. You, you know what There's I mean? There's a legitimacy, like, yeah. You, you, a lot of these are, these are, all these buzzwords are played off of emotion, you guys. And you guys haven't noticed. Which me equals money. Yes. Yes, whenever you can hit the core of somebody's emotion, you can sell to them. Yeah. So there's a lot of psychology in this. And then when I hear guys kind of throwing these around, not understanding the psychology behind it, it's even worse. Because it's like, okay, now it's trickled down to that, to a very low level where these guys are trying to use it. And now you're fucking up the game because you're saying shit all wrong and you're delivering, you know, you're communicating these things to clients all wrong, making us all look bad. Right. Right. So what, what it's like is, the, the, there's so many detailers out there, so many. Mm -hmm. So uh, now, when you say you're a detailer, everybody's kind of like, because mm. it's like, oh, my little brother up the street, my, my yeah. little, little, little Kiwan in there, yeah. they got their own business going up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's kind of like, mm. they, you know what they call that in the streets? You're putting salt in the game. <laughs> you're putting salt in the game. <laughs> You're it's fucking it up for everybody. <laughs> like you're, you're not doing nothing good uh -huh. for for, yeah, for, yeah, the, yeah. for for the industry. Yeah. Period. You know, so so yeah. And those of you, you know who you are. You're putting salt in the game. And you're messing stuff up. You know those ones that are. And there's a lot of ways to put salt in the hey, game. Well, like just like everybody is a producer nowadays. <laughs> you got a you got you got a laptop. You got a laptop you're a man, producer. you a producer. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just all those. You know, whatever, but. Um, but yeah, the, what are we on right now? Certification. Yeah. The certification and the messed up thing is now you got to be now people in companies are putting certifications out there that you have to pass in order to gain access to certain things. And that's their selling point. You're going to have access to use our product or you're going to have access to be on our, on our, um, on our directory or you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to have access to this. And there's always some kind of promise I, attached to I that. I think where people try to, where they go wrong, mm -hmm. they're trying to have a certification to, uh, oh, I lost, I lost it, but it's a, a certification in my opinion should create a standard. If you're not creating a standard, right. Right. Then, then it's, it's useless. It's like giving somebody a test and not have, it's like, it's like you going and, and taking your driving uh, written test only. And then you go out there and you never take the actual, the drive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of these certifications in our industry, to be honest, a lot of them are bullshit. I got a folder full of certifications and honestly, they don't mean shit. And they've never gotten me a job. They've never been, that nobody's ever asked me to pull these certifications. I don't even want the certification. Most of the time I go just for, I go for the self-improvement. Oh, I go because you, you, I'm going to get something. You know what puts salt in the game on that is the, the fitness industry. Oh, the, sheesh. Well, I, how many times have I quoted that the detailing industry yeah. and the fitness industry yeah. are literally becoming the same type of, because I think, again, the low bearing of entry, anybody who likes to work out wants to, can own a gym. Anybody I, that likes to wash their car can, can be a detailer. Well, like uh, uh, the, the, the term uh, YouTuber, too. Before, like for us, like 10 years model, ago. Model. Oh, yeah. 
it will. Come on. Like, to be a model, you... What type of model? We're talking about Instagram yeah, model? Yeah, that's not, that's not model. Model. Like, those aren't models. Like, technically, yes, they are models, but it's like, come on. Like, you're, you're not going to be on, on the cover of Vogue. Homegirl, you ain't going to be, you know, homegirl, you guy, whatever. Like, it, it, there's a different level. Like, you're not going to be a, a real... You're, you're not going to be runway. You ain't going to be in the, in the Louis Vuitton, you know... Fall winter collection runway show. Let's put it that way, mm. Miss IG girl. Instagram famous. What type of famous? Yeah. Oh, I'm Instagram famous. <laughs> yeah. When you're famous, yeah. man, you're famous. Yeah. Insta yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's kind of like, and the world is changing. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe that is the new, yeah, the new standard. It. But as far as these certifications, what is the certification doing? How's it look, bringing you money? Yeah. If look, it ain't bringing you money, it wasn't worth the certification. Look at that before you start. In, in, before you start uh, uh, protecting your investment. In, you know, before you start investing in your business. Before you start investing in your business with these certifications, see what they're going to do. Honestly, see what the... When I do any kind of training or the, anything that requires a certification... I say, does this, what value is this bringing me? You need to do the same thing that the clients do to you to how you're spending your money. So if you're not going to spend your money on it, if it doesn't bring you enough value, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. And that's just my opinion of, of these certifications. Certification just equals, just should just equal money. Like when I, like... Yeah, that, this, that, this that dude right there, something. that dude right there is certified. That, that means he's making money. So yeah. I need to be certified for whatever he's yes. doing. Or, yeah. Certification has gets a wrong term of being associated. Certified and associated are becoming intermingled. Just period as terminology. And that's what I think the certification like is. Like association? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's host, host association, certified. Like yes. they're they're slowly it's not, intermingled. Yeah. It's it's highly yeah. intermingled. Yeah. It's not necessarily you know, you're being certified in things, but it's like bare minimum things to be certified in, you know, if, and this is one of the reasons why we like to screen our students when they come to us. We're not giving any certification, but we're giving you some ridiculous financial and business literacy, but it's not about the certification. It's about what you're taking with you that's going to be with you for the rest of your life that's bringing value to you which is thousands of dollars in life-changing improvements in process that you're putting on your business, your financials, your life, gaining back time, all of those things. So when I hear certification, I'm like, okay, what, what, what kind of certification is this and what kind of access am I getting with it? And is it going to make a difference for me or my business? Next one we got, and this is another one that's in the detailing word big time, but just any business. This is this word is a good word for like YouTube search. Game changer in detailing, game changer in chemical, you know what I mean? Game. Most of these things that are titled game changers are not game changers. In definition, and again, let's put salt in the game. <laughs> Who, who's let, let's give an example of an athlete. Who's a game changer that's an athlete? Like, you know, from, from, from any, any era. Michael uh, Vick. Okay, Michael Vick. Just game changer. Just, like, you put Michael Vick in the game, something's going to happen. You put Michael Vick in the game, you're planning different. Yes, things change. Yes. That's a game changer. A game changer is something that drastically changes. You improve in your business, and you could automatically add another full detail, without a doubt. Yeah. We could do that. Yes. That, that, not that, yes, we could do it. But what I'm saying is like that's a game changer. Game, when, yes. when, you, when you change when things I, in your business. When something, I don't qualify anything as a game changer unless it hits a few points. It got to save me time. It got to save me money. It got to, it has to, it has to work extremely well. It has to be easy to use. It has to be. It has to save money and give me more money at the same time. Yes, <laughs> and time. Like, like it ha if it does not hit that criteria, it's not a game changer. Like, it's not unless it serves me in a way that's ridiculous. So, 
Game changer. Yes, we, we'll have a. We're gonna yes. have a whole top five. We're gonna call it game, game changer, changer, and it's gonna be real motherfucking game changers. It's not yeah. gonna be. Yeah. Oh, I just tried this new new tire shot. No, this shit's gonna be real game changing shit. Like the stuff that we tell our students, the things that shave off hours of work time. Mm -hmm. Game changers. So mm -hmm. when I hear the word game changer and people are talking about. Things that are like, okay, that's that's decent. That does make a difference, but that's definitely in no in no way, shape, or form should be considered a game changer. You mm -hmm. know, we have we have pretty much everything that we do is a game changer in our business. Everything we do is a game changer. You know, the way that we the way that we offer our maintenance program is a game changer. We offered our maintenance program to somebody yesterday. First time client, six month old car. Looks like it was detailed last week. We're offering him. We, we just did a full detail, but we're offering him the maintenance. If his truck looks like that and is six months old. So when all of our clients are like that, which they all are, that is a game changer. That changed our game. That opened up time. That, that sets a new standard for what we allow and the type of work that we're going to do going forward for anybody on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis, period. That's a game changer. Like operational changes like that or a product that uh, the super phone, game changer. Game changer. Easily game changer. Things like that are game changer. The clean Korea towel opposed to the other towels. That's a game changer. Over time, that thing is a game changer. It improves over time. It's a game changer. It's not just a, oh, there's no even thought of trying another towel. It's uh, running with no compressed air, and you get that compressed air in the corner door. That's a game changer. Game changer. That's that a is, game changer. That That's is. a great example of a game changer, because I think everybody can understand yeah. that one. If it doesn't change your business that drastically, don't call it a game changer. It's not, because it's not. You know, game, and game changers can be operational. They could be, you know, it could be a task. It could be, it could be a leadership, you know, trait that you've acquired or you work towards, and now you're really good at that. It could be, you know, tracking was a game changer for us. All of that stuff was a game changer. Good customer service was a game changer. There's, but it's not. It's doing it. It has to have a direct big impact on your business, like a big one. And a lot of the operational stuff you have to work at and be very proficient in order to make that big of a change to the business. You agree? Right. But there's things that you could throw into the business today that are gonna change it today. Yo man, this this 4 a.m. workout in the morning. Yeah. Game changer. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's changing everything about my life. It's changing everything about our work. It's changing everything about our health. It changes. And that's a direct, you know, like we're up at 4 a.m. ready to go. We're, we're, you know, we're either setting up the studio or we're on the road by 5 a.m. We're starting our day by 6. We're done by 10, 11. Hey, you, you, you know what it's doing? We're shooting this video hey. at 10, 29, and we're already done with you, the call. You know what I'm appreciating and like why I could like I'm learning to like this is something I just got to swallow. Like the 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 three thirty four a.m. wake up times, I rather do that and then focus on the nap rather than focus on the sleeping. Oh yeah, you know that's why oh, I'm yeah. just like okay. Yeah. Like what am I more happy with sleeping in or taking a nap? Like you know what I mean? Like nah. You got you got that take or you got taking that, a nap yeah. is like my I rather take a nap and 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 not sleep in. Yeah. Cause yeah. I can't sleep in. Sleeping in for me is like six thirty. Basically, what you did was you took a four-hour slice or three-hour slice of time mm -hmm. where most people are asleep, and all you did was move that yeah. to the middle of your day. Yeah, which is crucial, especially if you have kids. Yeah, you you don't want to spend all your time sleeping and tired with your kids. Yeah. Now Sal can go to Sal can spend the whole time at his kids' football practice. I, that's what be I involved, have dinner. That's what I gotta dial in more. Yeah. I gotta dial in my certain like nap 
Time. Yeah, but once you life. get that in order, you'll, you'll, you'll be man, boom, right, yeah, yeah, you'll have time for the wife, you'll have time for the kids. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about taking naps. Yeah. <laughs> How to maximize our naps. Yeah. So it's fun. It's, it's uh yeah, so game changer guys. If it ain't changing the game that much, and I understand that's a buzzword, it hits on social media, whatever. It's just thrown around a little too much. So again, with the salt game in the game. Salt in the game. Next one, professional. 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 This is Business. used. This is used. Uh, most of these are all used across every every sector of of the industry. This should be automatic. Yes, like when people <sighs> when I hear professional people, first of all, a lot of these guys talking about professional shouldn't be using it again. Certification. Professional, they're merging. And everybody loves a title, right? They're merging. Like if I see CEO on a business card and the business card is not made by the company, if they're making it themselves and you got to put CEO on it, or even owner, when I see owner, it's kind of like, you shouldn't have to do that if you're the owner. If you're representing the business, you should be doing it with a sense of ownership, period. Like in my opinion. But I know that doesn't work for because some people want to. Oh no, I'm the I'm the owner. I'm the you know. It's like professional is kind of one of those things where the ego steps in and you want to put professional on there, and it's used to kind of people think that it creates a certain level of status for them, but it really kind of makes them look. It's like you shouldn't have to state the obvious if that's the obvious. You know, they, it, and some people think they actually do have to do it because, you know, some people do only want to speak to the owner. But again, that doesn't need to be printed or told or whatever. So, uh, you know what this is my opinion when the people put owner operator. I like that because that just lets yes. me know like those. Whoever the technician is. The owner. Yes. Yeah. That's, that, I, I, I that's like one that. that I I, Yes, that's one that I, say I do that a lot agree with. With the with the truck drivers, when you see a driver, they go, I'm the owner operator. Yes. Okay, that man is making money. That's who I'm he's, talking to. Yeah, it's he it. knows what he's doing. Yes. So yeah. owner operator, and that's when people ask, "Are you the are you, are you the business owner?" Yes, I'm the owner operator. So I let them know. Yes, I am the because some people, and I've had clients before in the past where they only want the owner operator working on whatever it is that you're working on, their car, their house. And I understand, I totally understand that. I don't want some Joe Schmo employee of yours that hasn't been trained properly, that doesn't know what he's doing, that can't answer questions. Because when I have somebody come over for service, I'm asking quite a few things because right, right, I want to know right. what the problem was. Okay, it's kind of like when you, you got a, a customer complaint and you call someone and you got questions that they can't answer. It's like, okay, no, 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 no. Let's get this straight. Give me, put someone on the phone that can answer and act and and and, and play this out right with and answer the questions that I'm asking. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. That's who, where, that's why I need where to Where everything goes to. to a dead end question. Yeah, with, with, like, yeah, oh, no, like, there's some people who don't want to deal with that. I don't like to deal with that. It's like, oh, I, 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 like, no, 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 no. We, we need to, to make something to happen. Let me, let me speak let me, to somebody yeah, yeah. Who, can, who has some authority yeah. And can make some decisions, yeah. Yeah. and who's getting paid for com conflict resolution? Like that's any management or I, leadership. I don't want to hear about any, someone that says, "Oh, we can't do that." No, no, you can and do it. Give me to the someone yeah. that can. That's I've what. Walked, yeah. I've walked yeah. people through a way where they're able to. They're like, "I can't do that, sir. I can't." Every system has a bypass. Yes. Just Easy one. Adjustment. Easy one. When it says, "I need my refund," I can't do that. Yes, you, you can. No. Yes. No. Okay. Where, where, where is this? Where is this coming from? Where, where, where are we at? We're talking about Man. professional. Professional. Yeah. I yeah. Came professional. Yeah. But but yes. Oh, owner operator. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the owner operator. I get that. But as far as like professional, from a from a service standpoint, people use professional all the time because again, it's a it's it's a label, it's a it's a title. People love titles and. On the consumer end, it does feel safer. That's why it's a buzzword. That's why it works. Because people, if somebody says, if I look somewhere and it says window tinter, or if I go to somebody else's uh, 
you know, page or something, and it says professional window tinting. I'm probably going to look at the professional window tinting more than the window tinter. So that's, you know, window, you know, if it says window tint, professional window tinting, I'm probably going to, you know, spend a little bit more time there because it does bring a level of security to a consumer. You're, you, but again, there's a lot of people that call themselves professional that we do a lot of fixed work Another for. one that people use when they say, oh, what, do, what do you do? Well, I'm an entrepreneur. That means, that's just telling me, that's one of those dudes, oh, I did, I I did more dab, I did. Bit, yeah. bit, <laughs> so you ain't doing, you're not doing much. <laughs> so you ain't got a job. <laughs> that's what you're telling me. You ain't got a and job. And we're not talking about the real entrepreneurs out there. We're talking the, about the ones that the, 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 the game. And <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's a word that I don't like. Yeah. You know, we do a lot of things, you know, uh, details, we do a lot of stuff, but it's still not a word that I really like to use. I don't refer to myself as an entrepreneur. When people say, oh, what are you, oh, you're an entrepreneur? Uh, it's one of those words where I just kind of like, it's like, I'd rather not be called an entrepreneur because so many people have put salt in the uh, game. It makes it, you literally take value away from these words and people don't understand that. Like, Go ahead and throw GOAT in there. You yeah. know what I mean? GOAT. Epic. So those are our opinions on buzzwords in the industry. Buzzwords. So don't What's get that? don't get caught up in them. Don't get lost in the sauce with these buzzwords. That's what they're meant to do. Trust me, a lot of these buzzwords have cost me a lot of money, a lot of time. Oh, oh before I forget, before we roll out, the professional one too. That gets us on a consumer side when you see something say professional detailing products or professional this or professional that. What makes it professional? Yeah, it's, it's literally a title. You could have something more concentrated. You could have something for... When they say best burgers in town. Yeah. Coldest beer here. Yeah. They, that's, they should be cold. <laughs> yeah. So when we're talking professional professional grade there are some differences but again it should be set by standard and it should be set by a certain level of performance opposed to just a title that the, like i see guys that have a pro series they'll have a professional line they'll have pro series they'll have you know their standard stuff and then they'll have another one exclusive it's like how many of these are you going to make? Now you're just trying to make money. Now, and it's obvious, but there are some that have them broken down that for, for specific reasons. You know, like a good one is like PNS. PNS has some stuff that you don't want to mess with if you're just touching cars. But if you're touching fleets, okay, yeah. let's go that route. Yeah. 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 Like that's when you need to, to know the difference. And then they have, of course, you know, they'll have the Rennie Doyle Double Black Collection. That's specifically for... The detailer, you have the pro series for a certain type of work. Yeah. You know, you have, so when it's met with purpose and it's made properly and it's done properly. And for some people that could be argued, you know what I mean? People say it's all the, it's all the same thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But at least they're using it to identify, from my opinion, it's identifying risk. Like I know if this is this, it's going to be a stronger, more concentrated stuff. If it's this, like I pretty much know the Rennie Doyle line, I don't got to worry about messing anything up with that stuff. But if I go to another line at PNS, oh, you got acid in there, you got hot shot in there, you got aluminum brightener in there, you have, uh, you know, you have some other caustic stuff. Oh, I got to be careful with this stuff. I could, I could, I could cause some damage with this stuff. But also, under the right application, I could really, I could really make make progress with it so that's it for the buzzwords guys we're not saying these buzzwords are not true and that they don't hold value and that they don't have weight in the industry we're just saying they're overused they're used a lot they're used for consumer for the consumer end um and they're used to sell that's why they're buzzwords that's why they, they attract attention and money so mm -hmm. we say we say a few yeah we, we say, say we, we say yeah. we, we say a few daily the more you're able to identify these buzzwords the more that you're able to be a more conscious consumer as well as salesman. So if you guys have any buzzwords that you guys want, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Throw them out there. Let's hear them. 
Let's see what's, let's see, you know, let's see what's in the industry that we need to cut out. Period. You know, so there's some words, there's some words and phrases that we should probably drop because it's making us all look bad. Yeah. Upsell. Oh, throw that geez. on there. Hey, we're out. Jeez. Yeah. We'll, 